Welcome back, Space Cadets. This is Space Exploration News, where we bring you the latest and greatest from the final frontier without the hype. I'm your host, Carlos Munoz Kampf, and today we're going to be going over um, Chinese missions and advancements and future plans. Uh, we're also going to be talking about the European mission to Jupiter, some uh, exciting updates there. Uh, we're also going to talk about, <clears throat> excuse me, a new Space Force headquarters uh, in Florida uh, and uh, the greatest hits, you know, SpaceX, NASA and the ISS as well. Some updates there. Um, lots of science -y stuff as well. But anyways, uh, now the moment you've been waiting for this Space Exploration News theme song. Doki, so let's get crack a lack in here. This is the Europe's Juice Jupiter probe. Uh, and uh, as you may remember, they were actually stuck because uh, there were some issues. So Europe's Juice spacecraft is now in its full flight configuration six weeks after the flagship mission launched for Jupiter. The flight control team for the Jupiter IC Moons Explorer, or Juice, I love what they did there, has completed the deployment of the spacecraft's solar panels, antennas, instruments, and booms, the European Space Agency revealed on May 26th. <clears throat> it's been an exhausting but very exciting six weeks, Angela Dietz uh, from the program said. We have faced and overcome various challenges to get JUICE into the right shape for getting the best science out of this trip to Jupiter. JUICE earlier experienced trouble getting one of its key instruments, the Radar for Icy Moons Explorer, fully deployed. The 52-foot-long antenna remained jammed in its mounting bracket, but the issue was fixed two weeks later when the team fired a mechanical device within the bracket. This means that, the, that once the Jovian system, once in the Jovian system, sorry, which is... Uh, Jupiter, I think. Uh, uh, Ryan can use the radar to give a glimpse beneath the icy surfaces of its targeted Galilean moons as planned. Very, very cool. Um, if you haven't watched one of our previous shows where we were talking about Jupiter and the moons, please do so. And in general, just like if you don't know much about the, the Jupiter system and the moons there, some of these moons are bigger than planets in our solar system it's basically a solar system within the solar system uh, because jupiter is so huge the moons are also big and um ganymede for example the ocean there i mean they think there's an ocean of water underneath the ice there and it's expected to be twice the amount of water that the earth has so just wrap your brain around that but uh, we were not going to find out much about it if this thing was stuck. And fortunately, they got it unstuck. So let's watch the moment here. Pretty cool. Yeah. Doosh. You know. So for six weeks, this wasn't happening. And they were able to somehow uh, make it happen with a non-explosive actuator. I guess that's what they're calling it. Very cool. I'm really glad that they were able to do that. I'm sure they... They, they breathe the sigh of relief with that one. Okay. Well, let's keep uh, moving right along. I just want to double check. I'm recording. I'm good. Yeah. Let's keep going. Da -da 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 this is my third time recording this show, you guys. I've been having some technical difficulties here. All right. So let's talk about, uh, you know, China just uh, breaks its ride share record with a 26 uh, satellite launch. Let me see if I can show you the footage here. Oh, that's the rocket. What happened to the footage here? Oh, I guess it's not working. 
Uh, the Chinese Lijian 1 solid fuel rocket launched on Wednesday, June 7th, carrying 26 satellites to orbit. A rideshare record for the country, but, you know, I mean, SpaceX, I think that they can do more than that with their uh, Falcon 9 and, and soon with the the new um, the new uh, spaceship that they're uh, developing. But 26 satellites is nothing to scoff at, you know. That's pretty amazing development. So congratulations to the Chinese team there launching there just a few days ago. All right, let's keep going. More news from China. Uh, China's Changzhou uh, 15 capsule lands safely with three Changzhou um, space station astronauts. Sorry, I'm like butchering the Chinese there. I, I did take Chinese, but it did not work. I need to try to do it again. Uh, but anyways, um, the astronauts returned to Earth with a smooth and safe weekend landing after completing six-month mission to the country's space station. If you didn't know this, uh, China has their own space station. That's pretty cool. Uh, the Chengzhou 15 crew launched from Jishuan in northeast, uh, northwest China on November 29th and were part of this first-ever crew handover on China's new space station. Very cool. Congratulations team there. All right, let's keep moving. This one's more future oriented. So they, um, this article goes over, uh, this is on space.com. I think the previous two articles were also on space.com. <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, uh, China, China plans to land astronauts on the moon by before 2030. You know, so the heat is on their race to the moon. And also they want to add a fourth module to its space station. Officials with the nation's space agency said the country's plans for landing to the moon include a short stay on the lunar surface and human robotic joint exploration. Both NASA and China space agencies are eyeing potential landing sites near the moon's south pole where the water... Uh, ice and other resources uh, that could prove to be valuable for lunar settlement and exploration can be found. Sorry, this is a weird sentence. Um, let me let me just open this. Oh, here's a picture of the moon. I think I went over this article at one point. Uh, let me stay here. Okay, let's move on. So now we're going to talk about. Um, space news regarding Space Force. So after years of uh, surveys and celebrate deliberations, the Space Force last week announced it would uh, headquarter one of its major commands at Patrick Space Force Base in Florida. The headquarters for the Space Training and Readiness Command, check what they did there, Space Training and Readiness Command, or STARCOM, <laughs> okay, pretty cool name, will initially bring hundreds of personnel to the Space Coast to, do, to help develop training programs for Space Force members. The uh, Patrick operation will also include Space Delta 10, which is responsible for wargaming and tactics. Colorado and New Mexico were selected to host STARCOM's other two Deltas. One thing is interesting, I live in uh, Santa Barbara, uh, California, and we're actually close here. I'm like 45 minutes away from the face, Space Force Station here, and I've actually seen Falcon 9 rocket launches from my backyard. I actually heard about this from my uh, hairstylist, Denise. Evidently, she lives like right next to the base station, and at first she thought it was earthquakes. Uh, and then she realized that there's like a space station right there. And, and I didn't even know about this until I was talking to her. And I was like, oh, wow. You know, so I started following that a little bit. But evidently, they're uh, doing another space station, um, Space Force station now in Florida. Uh, and yeah, that's the news for that. So let's move on, carry on. Okay, so um, uh, NASA and so this is... From the NASA website here, June 5th, um, NASA and SpaceX uh, launch a solar arrays and cargo to the space station. 
Uh, following a successful launch of NASA SpaceX 28th Commercial Resupply Services mission, two new solar arrays, science investigations, and supplies are on their way to the International Space Station. Well, 7,000 pounds of cargo. That's pretty cool. Okay, so let's talk about some of these goodies. It's a lot of sciencey stuff. So there's this thunderstorm watch and... The punchline there is it's, it will help us with a better understanding of lightning and electrical activity in Earth's atmosphere and could improve atmospheric models and provide a better understanding of Earth's climate and weather. You know, with climate change coming along, this will be helpful. Okay, let's uh, also there uh, have this study to help plants chill in space. I'm sure that's not the plant habitat. Three, maybe that's the official name here. Uh, the investigation will create a second generation of plants using seeds previously produced in space and returned to Earth. Results could provide insights into how to grow multiple generations of plants to provide food and other services on future space missions. Okay, this is something I've, for example, taken for granted, right? We just, oh, we just take the plants to space and... You know, but we don't know what happens. Can they procreate? How What happens in the second generation and the third generation? So it's really important that they're studying this. Okay. Uh, moving on. Uh, testing a tel telomere technique. Telomeres, genetic structures that can protect our chromosomes, shorten with age and wear. But research has shown the telomeres lengthen in space. Interesting. Understanding the mechanism behind telomere lengthening could reveal possible effects on astronaut health during long-duration missions. Results also could lay the groundwork for a variety of related research to benefit future space travel and people on the ground. Huh, very cool. Okay, thawing ice, solar storms, and attitude recovery. I can't say I really understood all of this, but the gist of it seems to be that they, they're bringing a wide angle camera to monitor thawing of ice and permafrost in the Canadian Arctic, which could provide a better understanding of the effects of Earth's climate and support better local infrastructure and planning. And then watching cosmic weathering. I understood this one even less. So, you know, just go to the, the links are in the description. You can go and kind of dig into these a little bit more. You know, I, I only have an amateur level of like science understanding. At this point, I'm hoping to understand more in the future, but you know, I'm just really excited that this mission is advancing so many um, scientific efforts. And here you can read specifically what it is that they're doing, and you can even dig into these links and learn even more about you know what's going on there. So very cool! Congratulations for to the SpaceX and NASA team there. Um, all right, and last but not least, this is a future-oriented one, but exciting non the least, which is they're designing a cool moon car, the Lunar Terrain Vehicle, or LTV. And what they're saying is that we, um, they want to, let me read here, the, the NASA's pursuing a Lunar Terrain Vehicle services for Artemis missions. So they're trying to get a contract this is, we want to leverage industry's knowledge and innovation combined with NASA's history of successful operating rovers to make the best possible surface rover for our astronauts and scientific researchers. So I think they're looking for a partner um, to work with them and create uh, this LTV. So that is very cool. Very excited about that. And yeah, that concludes our show for today. Um, <clears throat> I'm hope you're, you're having fun, uh, with these. I certainly enjoy them. Uh, you know, sometimes I have technical difficulties. I have to record these over and over again. And, um, but actually I was feeling a little bit better about it today and, uh, I'm glad I recorded it again. I, I just want to, uh, yeah, try to provide some good value for for you all and let me know how how it's going if it's if it's interesting if there's anything i could i could improve i'm i'm obviously uh into making things better and better more uh, pleasant and we're still working on the vignette you know i have the theme song now but 
no, I need some kind of like stylish vignette thing, but I haven't, haven't found the time to do that just yet, but, um, soon enough, I'm sure. Anyways, thank you so much. I'll see you all on the flip side.